All right. Well, let's start up here on the top right hand side of the map, top of the blue Zerg player. He is none other than Dragon Phoenix Gaming's Dark. And his opponent on the bottom left side of the map here in this team kill, also for Dragon Phoenix Gaming, the smiling assassin, Hero. Do players need new nicknames when they come back from the military? I was just thinking about how old that nickname was. I, I like, I remember way back in even I am San Jose and crazy, crazy long ago. Now I feel like it must have been like six, seven years at this point, maybe even eight years. He's had that nickname. I mean, after eight years, I feel like someone's personality has probably changed enough that they maybe we, sh we should give them new nicknames. Mm. I don't know that he's always smiling when he's playing StarCraft anymore. The he unsmiling assassin. He's a grizzled old man and veteran who's probably become a little bit bitter about the different things that can happen in a game of StarCraft at this point. Well, I mean, if, if SOS two gating him like four games in a row to knock him out of a winner take all world championship, doesn't <laughs> grizzle him. I, I think we're fine, kind of fine to say he's still kind of a nice guy. You know, like if that That's doesn't true. break him, I don't know what will. That is true. That was a uh, man. Oof. He got like a, a, a high storage USB for second for getting in second place. Like uh, something like that. Yeah, I, I, it's one of those situations where I'm just glad that the players did not have to pay their own trip because imagine if you go for that kind of event, a winner take all tournament for a hundred thousand dollars and you have to walk away saying I came out negative from Ooh. the event. I was I one game away. Finals. Yeah. Yeah. That that truly would have been horrific, but man, that was a, a wonderful series. And you're right, Hero. It really does take a great person to be able to, you know, move on from that and not just immediately retire from StarCraft. I, I probably would have retired. And the wor worst part about that, if you want to talk about that, I think some players had a collective where they were saying, yeah, we're actually going to split this prize pool up as it normally would based on results. Esther was, was not part of that collective. Yep. Okay, so that is correct. He got his $100,000 and we got the myth of the uh, $100,000 man. <laughs> Very true. Uh, well, I will miss seeing SOS as one of those top competitors and stuff when we see him up there. But for now, let's talk about the wonderful Protoss and Zerg that we have actually around because we do have a little deviation from all of those standard Protoss Stargate openings left and right. Balemolf, oh my God, put an end to them. It's a robo opening. I always, I always love when I get to see a Protoss player mixing it up a little. And that's actually an interesting robo opening too, because we don't have a twilight. Four gates are done. Mm -hmm. uh, Heroes actually, I've seen, or I, I don't know if it's Hero, but I've seen Protoss players start to experiment with this a little more, where it is less, it's a less he tech heavy, a bit of aggression. So you just get the warp prism out of this. You have four gateways. You maybe build, really, you build adepts, and mm -hmm. you kind of maybe fake the Zerg into thinking this is more committed than it is. I mean, you get the extra gate, but you're not spending as much gas. And theoretically, that allows you to expand maybe a little more. But um, in this game, well, we don't see that just yet. Dark's got his Roach Run on the way, so he should be theoretically prepared to defend. He sees that there is no third base mm -hmm. just yet. But what do you think? Is this sufficiently uh, oddball? I mean, I th this really does remind me of some of the old big adept plays and stuff we would sometimes see from Protoss players. It's like this weird phase where Protoss player is like, what if I do Adept all in, but without resonating blades? Uh, there we go. There we go. And double Stargate's going to be the follow-up over here. He's going to try and force out as many units as possible from Dark. So he's going to be ultimately unprepared for the double Stargate follow-up. Well, Adept shade on forward and they get in, but they are fully surrounded by a lot of these links on the Ravagers. Are they going to be able to actually get enough damage done over here? Not killing any drones just yet, but are going to be able to shade into the main. And that's a lot of lings go down here as well. We're starting to see some workers die as well. Dark accidentally building a Ravager. You generally don't build those in these pushes. Actually, it looks like the Warpers have finds its way in the main, adding in more Adepts here. So yeah, only two workers have gone down. Drones are gonna, or drones are gonna have to get pulled now here. The Adepts, they're finally falling. Uh, but they have got a lot of lings. They're pound of flesh, rather powerful. Did the Warp Prism go down? Yeah, the Warp Prism Ooh, died. That's yeah, a big yeah. problem there. But look at this. It's double Phoenix play. I 
Honestly, Balaam, I don't really like how this has turned out because, okay, the double Phoenix are nice, but playing Phoenix when you're behind, I feel like does not usually bode very well because think about it. Phoenix are great for harassing. They're great for doing damage. They're great for gradually getting ahead. You know what they're not great for? Helping establish a third base when you have zero ground army left over at the end of everything. But if you think about it, Fear Dragon, if you lift all the lings, Phoenix do bonus damage to light units. That's true, but that's why that's why Dark got that one Ravager so ah. they curl the vile down the Phoenix one by one. Well, it's dead now, so oh, no. there we go. One Ravager. <laughs> the Phoenix, they're they're uh, they're uh, unbeatable by these lings now. Yeah, I just I really feel like it's gonna be difficult for Hero to get enough damage done with the double Phoenix while also finding an opportunity to actually establish a third base. So instead, he's just adding on another one of these warp prisms and also getting up a robotics bay, adding on another gateway. But this is just gonna be such a delayed third base. And I mean, Dark doesn't exactly have a stellar economy right now, but that's just because he was waiting for the opportunity where he could finally drone up safely. And that's kind of right now. Now he's gonna start getting up to a pretty comfortable, healthy drone count. Oh, we're starting to see Hero at least take one of the advantages of having such significant air control where you're able to knock down some overlords, Dark getting supply mm -hmm. block for just a moment. As you said though, Zerglings, as much as we joke about Phoenix, ah, oh, they do bonus damage to light. They, they actually, you're limited in energy. Zerglings <laughs> are pretty good against Phoenix play. The third base, it does get denied. But okay, behind this, we have Disruptor Tech, Warp Prism Speed. Hero's just getting kind of everything in this game. And I feel like I've seen this before, like once, and it did win the game but it got more done in the early game. He was able to supply block, whoever did this, like I think it was maybe classic. He was able to supply block the Zerg for forever because he got eight, nine, 10 Phoenix and he just knocked down five, six, seven overlords. And he was able to make that happen. But that is not the story of this game is though. That's a very low Phoenix. Queen should be able to target that one down eventually. Ooh. And now the Phoenix is stuck. Okay, so it's gonna yep. be a recall. There we go. And the Phoenix oh. dies. Still ends up losing that Phoenix. Yeah, a little unfortunate. They do spread out naturally, but there is not a whole lot of getting out of that one. The recall is going to kind of suck, but at least now the ground army is committed to staying at home. I think part of the reason why the third kept getting canceled is that Hero was looking to try and get something done by moving out with some of those units because he had the war prism. He was clearly looking to try and move out and do some maybe like non-committed aggression, just do some sort of punish on the other side of the map, but it just ended up not really working out. So now the third base is going to finish up very, very late on, but you know what, Baalmulf? There is a single unit that can bring anyone back from the brink of death. You know what that unit is? I believe it's the Dark Templar. You're absolutely right, actually. There's, there are two <laughs> units. There are two units that can bring you back from the brink of death as a Protoss player. One of them is Dark Templar. The other one that Hero has gone for is the Disruptor. He's already got a handful of them, and I really do think that if you are able to land those big Disruptor hits, there is an opportunity for Hero, but is he going to be able to find it? It doesn't look like it this game as he loses both of his Disruptors, and the War Prism cannot help out as the Corruptors are given chase. I mean, you say that. That, that is true. But look at the supplies right now. Yeah, Dark has an upgrade, but he has a, what is this? He's sitting on 14 supply in the air that he can't do much with. Hero actually with a supply yeah. lead going for this all in. And that's when things get serious. Just come to shots on the Ravagers as well. There are so many stalkers in this game. They don't have blink, so they're gonna have to micro a little bit harder. Biles landing on everything. Whoa that is massive, but the disruptor shot on the north side as well. So many Queens, so many Ravagers going on down. Hero, he pulled the blindfold on Dark in this game, and he is crunching on through. The question though, is whether he supplies, sur survives the reinforcement, because there's no war prism here. At least the, at least the, what are they even called? At least the Corruptors can knock mm -hmm. that one down. That is actually a really big win, be able to kill off that war prism, because like you said, it's just, there are reinforcements, but they are going to be a lot slower. Dark, I really think, yeah, at this point, just give up this base. I love the usage of the Corruptors just go for the third base because it forces Hero from a situation where he could maybe get a lot of damage done by killing off the fourth base and then retreating back home after the, he's done all this damage to maybe putting him a little more all in, but the shield battery overcharges the Stalker Warp and he kills off most of the Corruptors. And wow, Hero! Keeps the War Prism alive. Like, this is still looking like he might be able to turn this around. I think he actually already has at this point. Yeah, it's so fun watching this game. This feels like Hero from five years ago. Just the style he's playing, the oh, absolute map control style. Disruptor shot 
or a disruptor will stay alive. Now the shot's gonna go out. It's really only gonna get one Roach here. Uh, but it's a bunch of plus one star, because yeah, sure, they don't have Blink, but they fight Roach pretty damn well. Immortal stays alive as well, uh, well here. Biles will not land this time. So everything we saw that last fight... Okay, never mind, the Biles are landing. Uh, <laughs> Hero's gonna be forced back. Yeah, he is forced back, but I, I really do think that he already did enough damage. You can look at the worker count. Dark is down to 37 workers, and he lost his fourth base. Yes, Hero did take a little bit of damage also, but he kept his third base alive. This is now a three base Zerg versus a three base Protoss player, and the Protoss player even kept a couple of the Disruptors alive. He kept the Immortal alive. He has the Warp Prism alive, which I think is actually the biggest part of all of this, because it means that Dark also needs to stay at home and respect the Warp Prism. That's so big. Well, there's one Corruptor that is eventually going to be able to knock this <laughs> down, but Warp Prism speed is powerful, and uh, I want to point out their clutch transfuse there from Dark. He was going to lose a Queen, but he identifies he keeps that alive for now and uh because it's only a single disruptor in this war prism you know there's the other shot isn't an immortal there's less burst potential there's less stability to mm -hmm. wipe out a mineral line to snipe queens 100 to zero but hey fear dragon i know how this game is going to be won by dark he has a single muta on the way the single muta to chase down the warp prism a classic move and uh, i'm not talking about the protoss player this time but the other upgrade that we see in the production tab is the one that I'm very interested hmm. and curious about. Uh, pathogen glands coming on out from Dark. The Infestor Energy Upgrade. I mean, I guess the play is if you think your opponent is really committing to Stalkers as much as Hero is, you just drop Fungals on them. They cannot blink out, Biles land. And even if they can run a little bit, they're not going to split as well as you would like. And then you're able to take that fight. So now the single meter, the single corruptor, they're going to find inf No, they're not going to find infinite value, but they will force the war prism away from things. But of course, war prism speed, they're speedy boys. They're not really all that worried. And now the second push from hero coming on in. He finds himself up 20 army supply. Infestors will be ready by the time pathogen lands is done. Or more importantly, they're going to time up rather nicely. Your disruptor shot going down and it's not going to get much. But there are more disruptors where that came from. Stock is looking to move on in. I would not be surprised to see Hero just blink on top of this army right now. The fourth base heavily under fire. How does Dark hold? Dark going to be target firing down a couple of these disruptors. He doesn't end up having to cancel that fourth base. Well, he also goes for the Corruptor run by over at the low ground third. While the Mutas try and move into the fourth location. Looks like the Corruptor will get a little bit of damage done. But eh, the Mutas do get forced back. And I don't think the Corruptor can actually take out a Nexus. Even even if you remove the shield batter, I think that caustic spray actually expires before you kill the Nexus. You know, it's one of those things where you know, I play Zerg. I didn't know caustic, spire, uh, caustic spray actually expired because the things die or they don't die. <laughs> <laughs> it's not relevant 99 games out of 100. But I yeah, guess I that's mean, why. How often? <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense that you would know that uh, because that would make it a 99% useless fact, right? <laughs> that's very true. The 1% one per the one use case. Not even going to happen, actually, in this game, though. Ooh, nice uh, fungal on the disruptors, actually, of all units. Didn't quite land the uh, corrosive vials on the disruptors. That would have been a big victory and a big, big pairing potential here. With the infestors pairing with the uh, corrosive vials from the ravagers. If you can land those on the disruptors, I'm actually starting to believe maybe there's an opportunity for Dark to actually take a good engagement here, but it's going to be really tough without that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Fear Dragon, this is such an interesting scenario. I'm saying the Protoss has it. You're saying the Zerg has it. I play Zerg, you play Protoss very clearly. Some biases are here, but now we're running out of fungals. One big disruptor shot knocks them down. And Dark, he is a three-base Zerg against a four-base Protoss. Uh, we do have Charge on the way as well. It's 15 minutes into this game. Charge is not done. Stark's playing on forward. Biles do not hit here as Hero as a concave moving on in. You look for a fungal on the right side. That's going to be nice, but it really doesn't matter because all the disruptors are on the left side here. Moving on in. Stalker's getting on top of everything. And now, mm -hmm. as the investors die, Fear Dragon, Hero, he takes game one. Spotting in the upper right in the blue. He's up 1 0 in this series. The Protoss player, it's Hero. His opponent in the bottom left in the red. Down one. Going for an early pool. It's dark. So dark has... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Drone moving across the map. I was somewhat surprised to not see in that last game, but... I don't know. Dark has been doing this a lot in recent weeks he will go early pool he proxies the hatchery 
and it seems it feels like it's killed every single Protoss. I would almost not be surprised to hear it block the wall here, but he's not going to. And now the hatchery is made. I feel like the response to this is you block the wall, you pull probes. Because that hatchery goes up. Dark has four or five different reactions to this. He does a semi-commitment. And he goes for... Uh, he floods Lings later on with Ling Speed. He just floods Lings. And it, it, I've seen Dark kill Protoss players with this build a lot. And it, every single time it happens, because the Protoss player says it's not worth it to pull probes, I'm going to let the hatchery get up. And I don't think that's true. Now we're going to have to see whether Hero has a different idea. But for now, I mean, we just got to wait for the second Zealot to pop out. Double Adept coming in after that. Uh, Zerglings, they're powering away at this gateway, but... Realistically, the gateway doesn't die for a little bit here. Nice micro from Dark to start to make things out. Oh, he's going to get us around on one of these Zealots. Moving on in here, but Zealot should find a little bit of a safe spot here as more Zerglings arrive, but a Zealot is dead. Now it's only a single Zealot once again. Shield battery is going on down because Hero has to prepare himself for the ensuing flood. More and more Zerglings on the way. Dark is just absolutely committing this. He says, yeah, I have Lings on both sides. Zealots are going down. Adept pops on out, but this is going to be a dead gateway. It's a single gate here. The wall is not all that great. Second gateway pops on up, though. And notice what Hero is doing. He's positioning himself in such a way where he can get on top of the Lings. But here's the thing. Zergling harassment will not allow that to happen. So now Zerglings are going to look to run on into the main base here. And life becomes extremely complicated for Hero. Now, it's only two Lings right now. So the Adept should be able to deal with that for the most part. But Zerglings find their way into the natural. They got us around here on the Adept. Shield Battery doing a good job of keeping things alive for now as more and more uh, Adepts arrive. But now here comes the Queens. Adepts don't kill Queens. Queens, they kind of kill Adepts. Shield Battery 1, though, is uh, still pretty full. Shield Battery 2 is empty. So all the Zerglings are falling down. We're getting Stalkers getting thrown on out here, but it's only single gate production. Now the probes get pulled. Looking to trace, track this Queen down. But here's the thing. The Queen finds itself in a damn fine spot. Queen, though... It inject. Oh, interesting. The queen injected. That's not what you normally see. But now Zerglings find their way into the main base. So Stalker is going to start to shell away at this hatchery. Zerglings in the main base are going to be annoying. Two workers go down, but Adepts arrive here as well. And Hero seems to be holding this. Now, it's always one of those things where the Protoss player seems to be holding it. And then they're not. Oh, Adepts out of position here. Zerglings can find their way on in, but that feels like it might be a little bit suicidal in this game. What did the Queen spend his energy on? It's not an inject, but I don't see a creep tumor anywhere. Uh, okay, so Zerglings run on in the main base, but Adepts warp in now because Warframe is done. A Stalker dies. But at this point, Hero has held. He doesn't have his natural just yet. But he's got an Oracle on the way. He is knocking this base down. I think we're going to see Dark make one more attempt at it as his Overlord will uh, eventually go. Well, actually, it should be able to. No, I think this Overlord goes down. There we have it. GG. Hero takes game two. Hero is in the finals.